desire is always there in the heart to love Krishna, to love the Supreme. Because Nitya Siddha Krishna Bhakti Sadja Kabunarai Shavanadi Siddha Chitta Koriya Uda. Within the heart of every devotee, every person, every living entity, the original Krishna consciousness is there. But now it is covered by the modes of material nature, uh, covered by this material energy, and thus it is dull. We cannot see properly, hear properly, understand properly Krishna. But once we start to really hear and chant from a bona fide source, not some whimsical or some uh, artificial source, it must be a bona fide source. Just like all of these activities we are performing here, they are not whimsical. It is not that we have just hired some priest to mumble some mumbo jumbo. <laughs> because how is it that all of the priests together are mumbling the same mumbo jumbo? <laughs> they are chanting ancient mantras from the Vedas. Timeless mantras, hundreds of thousands of years old. And these ceremonies, these uh, way in which to bring the deity, attract the deity here, all of these nice things are attracting the deity, attracting Lord Nishringadev, Prahlad Maharaj to come and stay here in our temple. They don't have to come and stay in our temple. There are plenty of other things Lord Nishringadev can do. He does not have to come and stay in our temple. He can stay where he is, in the spiritual Vaikuntha planet. He has his own Vaikuntha planet. But he comes here because we are asking him, and in a very nice way we are asking him. There's all these ceremonies, mantras, all these mantras, like the Purusha Shukta, calling the Supreme Lord. Please come, please come. Come here so we can worship you. This is not whimsical. There are very strict rules and regulations, exactly how to do everything. That's why we're being very careful. You cannot just do whatever you like. So in a similar way, in the philosophical sense, you cannot just say whatever you like. You must actually have a correct philosophy that comes in the disciplic succession. Since time immemorial, coming from Krishna himself, from spiritual master to disciple, from spiritual master to disciple, down through the ages to the present time, one must repeat what Krishna says. So many uh, swamis and so-called swamis and yogis have come from India, but they are concocting their own philosophy, concocting their own rituals and procedures. They are not following the Vedic principles and procedures. They are not following. They are saying, we are very great because we have invented a philosophy, invented this understanding. Uh, and then ultimately you become God. You do some meditation, push your nose this way, that way, <laughs> or twist your leg around your head, <coughs> or you just 20 minutes a day, you think of some word, and then you become God after some short period of time. Or else nowadays they have very nice philosophy, you can just hoot like an owl while flapping your arms. <laughs> and then you can go out and have as much sex life as you like, and then you become God. <laughs> this is the modern philosophy. People are very attracted to this. But they are not very attracted to the bona fide way because it means you surrender to Krishna. You give up all this nonsense, activity. You surrender to the Supreme Personality of God. That they don't want. They want to become the Supreme Lord. Therefore they are not very interested in surrendering in these bona fide ways because that means austerity. You have to give up things all of these so-called material enjoyments and satisfaction. You have to give them up and take the higher taste. Nobody can say that all day to day you were born. It is a lot of fun, all of these procedures. The more fun nobody was here for. Yesterday we had the most wonderful time when the, when the demons were thrown out. <laughs> and we burnt the one demon and he was running all around in here, flames. Everything was the most ecstatic show I have ever seen. <laughs> And you all missed it, you're all in mind. <laughs> but anyway, Krishna consciousness is fun. 